All right, we're back with round three of looking at Turning Point USA and punishing ourselves. Uh, it's getting it's getting bad. It's getting bad, folks. This is uh, is there anything good about socialism? So in the past, Charlie Kirk has crushed socialism. He's smashed socialism. He's destroyed it, and now he's gonna see if there's anything good about it. Let's see. Is there any um, aspect of socialism that actually is good? Or is there any mix of? Is it um, possible that any kind of aspect of socialism is good at all? Like again, what about Medicaid? No. What about? No, so it's, it's based in collectivism. It's based in the idea that I could take a gun to your head and take money away from others. Um, socialism is a creed of greed and of envy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's just like, so he's, he's saying any type of collectivist thought like um, somehow makes you greedy and envious. It's almost just like projection. It's just like almost yeah. anything you can say about capitalism, they're just say, oh, that creates that for socialism because they have a government too. Yeah, I mean, I could say, like, oh, socialism exploits its workers by taking the surplus value of their labor and putting it and giving it to the government. Like, replace government with capitalist, and you've got yourself a description of the current system we have. So, I mean, this guy is just projecting all of the problems typically associated with capitalism. You know, greed and envy being pretty much like the driving engine of the capitalist system seeking to expand your profit and establish a monopoly uh outcompete your rivals i mean so this guy is projecting all of the horrible aspects that fuel the capitalist system onto socialism and he's saying socialism is a creed of greed and envy but you know obviously this guy is funded by big capitalists i'm sure that they're not greedy his funders aren't greedy and envious whatsoever. And of societal malpractice. Um, and it violates every single one of the things that I talked about earlier of basic condition of human rights and private property and free exchange of ideas. And uh, to that extent, socialism has been implemented over 100 times in the last 100 years, neo-Marxist socialist ideas. And, and the incalculable death toll speaks for itself. You have 100 million people killed in the last 100 years. Um, there's something fundamentally true. So yeah he says a hundred million in the last 100 years um me and fvk will have to do a deeper dive on the actual numbers kill uh you know of people killed by stalin the numbers alleged that stalin killed and mao and all those people because there's a great deal of uh misinformation about all of that stuff yeah, and the, the biggest thing is, um, it really is interesting when these people quote different numbers. Um, you know, you hear 100 million a lot, sometimes you hear 60 million. But these come from like, you know, these different historians from like different periods of the Cold mm -hmm. War and such. Um, you know, the more that evidence has come out, they've had to adapt their story and the numbers have like gotten lower and lower. Um, I know for the Soviet Union, I think they're they're even saying like nine million now yeah so it's just like it's one of those things it's not like held the test of time but they're just quoting like literally like robert conquest like cold war hysteria um, yeah books that were being written at the time that were funded by like um you know like the government literally was like funding conquest um so yeah it, there's no um historical agreement on how many numbers there were um, that hasn't been like even confirmed it's not just like a fact yeah and they'll do stuff like they will equate wartime losses with like part of the government purge of society or natural famines with like total population loss and they will like throw those numbers in and place it on the doorstep of communism and say like oh I've even heard numbers of uh, people saying like Joseph Stalin killed 120 million people. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, even that number exceeds the total number that Charlie Kirk is saying, you know, communists have killed. So, I mean, obviously the numbers have changed over time. You know, Stalin killed 120 million people one day. Now he just killed 9 million. You know, even those numbers, you know, you have to wonder. And... Uh, the Soviet archives opened up after the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 91 and since then 
Western archivists and journalists have had to sort of go back and reevaluate the numbers and the assessments made by people like Robert Conquest and Kotkin and all those other Western propagandists who forged all these numbers about the Ukrainian famine and about the Greek purge and what have you. Uh, and they have had to sort of reevaluate and recalculate. And they've shown that, you know, obviously the numbers don't match up, that Stalin didn't really kill that many people. Yeah, I know even in like the Black Book of Communism, um, they were they were looking at how many children in Ukraine would have been born, like if the famine didn't happen. So it was like these <laughs> numbers of people that didn't even exist yet. Um, and they threw that into like the equation when they came up with the like that hundred million number. So it, it is pretty insane when you look at what they were taking into consideration to trying to get yeah. those numbers. Like, imagine if you took the number of potential people born that would have survived had Hiroshima and Nagasaki not been bombed, like, in World War II. Yeah. And, like, laid that at the feet of the U.S. government. <laughs> so, like, well, you know, 30 million people would have been born, so that's, like, 30 million people you killed. That's the same level of absurdity that we're dealing with. Troubling and wrong about that. So when they start to talk about Medicaid... Well, you want to talk about one of the most abused social welfare programs in the country? Okay. You want to talk about Social Security, which is bankrupt, stealing all of your earnings every single day, and that we should be able to opt out of before the age of 25, but we're not allowed to because somehow we have to pay into some Social Security fund that we're never going to see. You want to talk about Medicare, which you know is $120 billion a year in documented waste, fraud, and abuse. So yeah, if that's socialism, then socialism does suck. If you want to talk about <laughs> socialism being the U.S. Yeah, well, um... They want to equate socialism to just like, um, you know, any type of public policy that could even like alleviate the workers situation, you know, to them, they want to portray that as like socialism as far as like it's already being like, you know, it's happening and we need to like resist it because it's in, like encroaching on us and all this stuff. <clears throat> yeah, once you learn that these people are funded by like big business, everything that they say makes a whole lot more sense. Yeah. Because it's like, why are these guys so concerned about government regulations? Shouldn't the only people concerned about that uh, be, like, big business owners and stuff like that? And, of course, you learn who funds them. And it's like, oh, of course, they're against regulation. They're against anything that could alleviate the burden on the working class. And citing stuff like Medicare, Medicaid as, like, socialism... It's not because the government is still a bourgeois government. Like, as long as the ruling class is the bourgeoisie, you're not going to have socialism. You can have something that kind of resembles it in, like, large public programs, but you will never have actual socialism. So this guy, you know, Charlie Kirk, once again, he says he's debunking and smashing socialism, but he really isn't postal service which is bankrupt doesn't get stuff on time completely and totally inept is being out competed by fedex and ups and a dhl every single day with zero government subsidies you want to talk about you know socialism being so good because of the va really you want to talk about the va 150 billion dollars a year we have vets dying waiting in line for care that's government-run health care isn't it so what's the solution <laughs> yeah privatized um like va care <laughs> like yeah i mean I guess that's what he wants. He wants, like, our veterans to go get blown up halfway across the world for, like, an oil company and then come back over. They're, like, quadriplegic, have PTSD flashbacks constantly. And then they're like, oh, yeah, you're going to need to get, like, a premium membership card for your new privatized VA healthcare and pay, like, out the ass for months. Good luck finding a job since you can't, like, move from the waist down or from the neck down. Yeah, and it's like obviously like that you know the VA system is shitty. You know what I mean? Like that's like uh, that's an obvious fact. But like, to, uh, who who should be like fixing that? I mean, I, we don't expect the government to fix everything, but like you know they would. That's better than just like privatizing that. And like I mean you know you're fighting for like with the military and all that shit. So like yeah, yeah you'd think that the government would be helping them, but they're not. But I mean that's not like socialism. 
because yeah. the military is like trying to <laughs> poorly funding their wounded soldiers that's like more just like revealing about them than anything yeah it's it's funny because it's like where do the veterans come from like they obviously come from all these imperialist wars that we're doing they don't just like it's not not all like accident on the work site related shit like he was cleaning his gun and he shot himself in the balls or something like that <laughs> Like, I mean, the reason we have all of these veterans is because we're involved in all these imperialist wars in the name of capitalism. So once again, like, Charlie Kirk, you know, the gauntlet's laid down, the ball's in your court now, bitch. Like, you know, you're saying, oh, the VA sucks. Well, you know, maybe the reason why the VA is so overbloated in the first place is because we have too many veterans, too many wars going on. So, you know, that's the fault of capitalism. So, um, no, if you look at government, you see nothing but waste, fraud, abuse, misallocation of tax dollars. I would make an argument. I make this argument. If we abolished every social welfare program and substantially and dramatically lowered taxes, you would see an explosion of private charity and philanthropy that would more effectively and more morally take care of our citizens. Yeah, that's so stupid, thinking that private charities will pick up the slack and will actually be a better substitute than uh welfare programs yeah this is literally like a nightmare scenario like if that happened yeah. all all public programs cut and then it's just like everything is privatized i mean you you just kind of go back to like i feel like you go back to like um I don't know, company towns and stuff like that. You just see, like, all this, um, you know, a, a, like a free, like, grab for these public yeah. institutions. Um, maybe, you know, similar to, like, what happened with the USSR. I mean, like, it was, like, literally a bunch of oligarchs just, like, bought up those state-owned enterprises real quick and, like, formed these monopolies. So, yeah. I mean, it's not like it would just be... Monopolies <laughs> would still result, nonetheless, and yeah. that's just what always happens. This is the problem with libertarians: is like all of their proposed solutions would be so disastrous in application that it would cause like a society-wide collapse. Like, what happens when all those millions of people who rely on Medicare, and Medicaid, all of a sudden that program gets cut, and they're just shit out of luck? <laughs> and, you know, he says, oh, private charity will pick up the slack, but private charity is just that. It's private. They don't have to give service to people that they don't like. What are all the trans uh, poor people supposed to do? What are all the Islamic poor people supposed to do when all these, like, private Christian charities start refusing them service based on, you know, their uh, ethnicity or their gender orientation? It's... A complete lack of foresight and you know if our country has the ability to pool tax dollars together to fund uh, fighter jets and bombers and drones and planes and all this expensive uh, bullshit for imperialism well certainly we can scrounge together the money to make sure that the poorest most vulnerable people in this country don't die like dogs on the street yeah this is like um it, it almost sounds like classic Adam Smith, you know, believing that like the rich would, you know, just start giving back once they like acquire <laughs> enough wealth. Yeah. Like, I mean, that that obviously didn't happen. I mean, we can, you know, they love saying like, oh, look at your system. It didn't work. And it's like, well, I mean, look what resulted. It was monopolies. It wasn't like this, like super charitable. Everybody was just a petty bourgeois business owner and they were yeah. all sharing these ideas. No, it was crushed by these monopolies and everything. And even if somebody like Jeff Bezos was philanthropic as fuck and he just gave like millions of his dollars to charity, which I'm sure he's done, I'm sure he's given millions to charity, but if you consider that in a single day Jeff Bezos earns more than most of us will in an entire lifetime, an entire career of working, uh a few million dollar donations to a charity here and there is just a drop in the bucket and if there was no government oversight then rich mega capitalists like Jeff Bezos would easily buy out pretty much every institution in society you'd be living in the United States of Amazon uh, by the time uh, he's done 
than all of these government welfare programs combined over the last decade. Combined. And you would see you would see an explosion of people taking care of people. Uh, is it? All right. That was painful to listen to. Yeah. <laughs> He pretty much just, yeah, advocated for something that would just be an absolute disaster. Like, they act like it, it is absolute projection. You know, yeah. everything he said about, like, you know, what socialism would do, like, would result, like, from what he's talking about. Yeah. He's, he's like, don't, um, don't advocate for the tyranny of government. Instead, advocate for the tyranny of private, completely unaccountable individual corporations. Mm hmm. Like, at least in theory, the government is supposed to be, like, answerable to the people. There's supposed to be, like, this thing called democracy that prevents government from going against the people. But uh, in the corporate structure, the common person, the consumer, has really no sway. The corporate structure will feed them slop if they could afford to get away with selling them slop. So in a situation like Charlie Kirk's weird little universe where there's no government and the free market reigns, like, you will just be competing over eating slop with, you know, Amazon and Walmart and Target fighting amongst themselves. Who to, uh, how to sell you the shittiest product for the most profit possible. Yeah, I, I've been looking a little more into like what the what these libertarian types believe on monopolies, and um, their whole theory is that that the free market will like you know extinguish them, because <laughs> the way they see it is like governments, in, um, you know, solidify monopolies, and I mean that's that's true. There is a relationship there, but it's not like you know. Um, it's like who's going to who you know yeah. what I mean? the the private capitalists have already acquired most of like the resources of the land and all that stuff so they you know the government like you know is very like they can encroach on them and like there's a parasitic relationship between them but yeah um i mean there's nothing to say except for like yeah i don't know how they would um like solve that issue and Another thing to point out is, like, absent the government, that's like taking away the police, the military, all of that stuff, and replacing it with, like, Amazon's own private military force. Amazon's own, like, private security police force. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they're just talking about privatizing every possible thing in a society. Like, imagine how a privatized fire, uh, fire brigade would look. You know, your house is burning down. And because you haven't paid for the Bronze Plus, you know, membership package, they're just going to let that fucker burn to the ground. You're, you're yeah. out of luck, buddy. You know, one thing that, um, that even they, they kind of argue over sometimes, it's hard because, like, some of these certain industries, like electricity um, or water for a city... Um, normally it's like one company doing that right yeah so like when this first started like going down in like um, the late 1800s it was like these competing electricity places and um, you know in Chicago it was actually a problem because they were competing so hard these 12 companies that um, the prices just kept lowering till they weren't making like any money <laughs> um, so it was like super cheap and everything but there was yeah they couldn't like sustain themselves um, so eventually, yeah, regulations did come in that helped one um, company, you know, um, be the dominant one. Yeah. So yeah, the, you can say that the government helped monopolies, but it is like a symbiotic relationship between the two. Um, but like, you know, wh what would the libertarians rather have? We have like 20 different choices as far as like electricity for our city and stuff like that. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I. I guess that's going to be the thing. Like, there's going to be like 50 different electric companies in one city. The grid's going to be a nightmare. <laughs> uh, picture like 50 power lines all next to each other, all going to the same places. But since they're made by different companies, they're not set up on the same network. So, like, just imagine that, but also with roads, but also with like sewer lines. Um,. And you begin to see kind of a problem. Uh, imagine like the fire hydrant situation. There'd be like 50 fire hydrants for every individual company on the street. Um, so 
yeah, this whole libertarian idea, it's something that serves only to reinforce the power structure of capitalism. And it's one that's pushed by these big brain hyper capitalist boys like the Koch brothers that have obviously an interest in getting government to deregulate everything and expand privatization. But them trying to sell this to your average, like your average Joe, your average college student, it's complete bullshit. And it's hilarious that anybody buys into this. I'm going to give it a dislike. But I think that pretty much wraps it up for this video. Absolutely pathetic. Peace.